Hello everyone, Lisa Stoutmire here to share nuggets of inspiration and empowerment for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Last week, I talked about overcomer status and within that conversation, I mentioned some promises to the overcomer. Now, the next couple of weeks, I am going to expound on those promises because there's nothing like somebody promising you something that you don't have a good understanding of what it is that you're being promised. So I wanna take some time to talk about each one of these promises. And the first promise that was made to the overcomer was that of Revelation 2 and 7, you shall eat of the tree of life. Now this promise was made to the Ephesus church, also known as the Loveless Church. Yes, this is the church that started off on fire for God, but as time passed, they lost their love for, for God and they got caught up in their works. They had all the works in line. They did all the things that a believer is supposed to do. They're a hundred percent attendance in their church. They're at every prayer meeting, every Bible study, every every usher board meeting, every choir rehearsal. They are um, visiting the sick and the shut in. They're doing all the things. But in all, oh, and one of the other main things that they were doing, they even um, took heed to the warnings of the false prophets and teachers that would arise among the church, and they even denounced all that falseness. They didn't fall for the false prophets and the false teachers. So this Ephesus church looked like they were the model church, the perfect church but God told them I have one thing against you you have left your first love I see your works God sees everything that we are doing but he knows the motivation behind everything that we do so he said to them I see your works but this I have against you you have lost your first love you have lost me. Now, if you have a Bible like I have, those words are written in red. And if it's written in red, it is said by Jesus. Now, this is the revelation that was given to John the Apostle, where God visited him and showed him things past, present, and to come. So they had all the works. They were doing everything but it was not to the glory of God. As time passed, they somehow lost their zeal or their love for God and was stuck in work mode, still doing all the things. But Christ was no longer a part of the equation. Now, if you are a person listening to this recording, and you have accepted Jesus Christ as your savior. You have experienced deliverance. You have experienced miracles like you've never had before. You have experienced abundant grace. You've been a part of God's mercies that we're reading that are renewed every morning. Ask and ask yourself if this is you, if this fits you, if you have lost your first love, how can you experience Christ but allow yourself to put him on the back burner, to take him out of the equation? How is it possible for a believer that serves a wonderful Savior and have been protected, have been blessed, have been healed, all these great things you've experienced. But how can you leave your first love for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son? How can you leave that love? But you still had the look, you still had the appearance. And I wanna talk about a couple of things that can make us lose 
our zeal or our love that we have for God. The first thing that I want to mention is sometimes when we are in Christ and we experience Christ, we get stuck in routine. My grandparents did, did it this way. My mother and father did it this way. So this is the way that I'm going to do it. And I'm going to teach this to my children and I'm going to pass it down to my children's children. Just getting stuck in routine. Just because this is how it was done. This is the way it will be. Nothing changes. So we just get stuck in routine. We get to the point where we go to church. We've been going to the same church for 20 and 30 years, for generations. We go to church one way and we come out the same way. Nothing changes. But how can we not adapt to change or create change or move with the times when everything around us is changing, but we don't? We just get stuck in routine. That is how we can leave God on the back burner. Just doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over. And over and over, we sit on the same pew all the time. Got our favorite pew that we like to sit on. We got our same people we like to talk to. You mean to tell me God never leads you or you never inquire of God? Should I sit somewhere else? Should I talk to somebody else? Should I be doing something else? We should be in constant communication with God. He says, acknowledge me in all thy ways and I will direct your path. So because we get stuck in routine, we no longer acknowledge God. Another thing that will cause us to lose our love and our zeal for God is the applause of men. You became the master of whatever it is you do. You are the best. Can't nobody out sing you. Can't nobody out preach you. Can't nobody out clean the church. Can't nobody out cook you. Can't nobody out talk you. Can't nobody out dress you. You became the absolute best. Men gave you applause. They put you on the pedestal. And now you've decided that you don't, you no longer have to acknowledge God in this. Then we start operating out of our own abilities when we start to allow ourselves to internalize and hold on to the applause of men. We know God got us to that point. But now because people, oh, you so great. Oh, you so wonderful. Okay, God, I got this now. I don't need you anymore. I'm, I'm here now. So I could just, I could take it from here. I can keep going. Mm-mm, mm-mm, no. On the flip side of that, another thing that will cause us to put God on the back burner is the lack of applause of men. You are great. You are the best. You are real good. But when men reject you, when men reject what you have to offer and, and you know you're the best and they, they um, praise and celebrate everybody else around you. So the lack of applause of men will cause us to convert into people pleasing. And now God is no longer the motivator behind what we do. We put every one of our efforts into pleasing people. When you are constantly pleasing people, you are not pleasing God. People don't have all the answers. People don't know all the ways. People don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. So we have to move out of people pleasing and one more thing i want to bring up that will cause us to fall away from our love of god or to lose our zeal for god and take him out of the equation is when we have unanswered prayers or when the storms of life seem to exemplify more power 
than the power that God says that he has or the power that he says that he gave us, then it will cause us to uh, allow our faith to become distorted. But now since we've been in this thing so long and we've been saying praise the Lord and we've been preaching on the rooftops and saying Jesus this, Jesus that, now we don't want to walk away from that because we don't want anybody to look at us funny. But we begin to go through the motions. And these are some of the things that will cause us to lose our first love even after experiencing the benefits of that first love and this just mentions a couple of scenarios but whatever it is that has caused you i've been working on mine that's why i'm able to be to deliver this message on for you on today but no matter whatever it is that have caused you to lose your first love if you have or if you know someone that has because if this is not for you this is definitely a nugget that you can share with somebody else whatever has caused you to put God on the back burner either in some of your works or all of your works all hope is not lost. Praise God for that. The scripture says it simply here in Revelations 2. Just do your first works over. You don't have to perform any special tricks. You don't have to go gather up any unspotted lambs and and you you do you should have an altar in your house. You you need you do need to build an altar in your home and put yourself living sacrifice on that altar but all you have to do is start your first works over in other words just pick that same zeal back up pick up the same mind frame that you had when you first came into the knowledge of christ when you first accepted him in your heart go back to that time when you were serving god and you wouldn't even blink an eye if God didn't say blink and you sitting around looking all paranoid, Lord, is that you? Lord, should I go here? Lord, should I do that? Go back to that time when you did acknowledge God in all of your ways. Go back to when you were consulting him about, should I enter into this relationship? Should I be in this contract? Should I come into agreement with this? All you got to do is just Start your first works over. But by you starting your first works over, guess what? God is a God that he loves you so much, he's not going to leave you out there because in this promise, God is doing his first works over. He has given you the right to the tree of life, which is what he gave man in the beginning. He told Adam, you can eat of every tree of the garden except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Of every other tree, you may freely eat. And that tree, those trees included the tree of life. Man had unlimited access to the tree of life unlimited access to life not just to life to live into abundance to health to joy to peace unlimited access to life but because man did not consider god when the serpent convinced Eve, and I say man, I'll say both of them. We're talking about the scenario, not any specific person. But when the serpent convinced them to eat of the forbidden tree, they didn't acknowledge God. They didn't consult God. And as a result of that, God had to deny them access he guarded the garden with cherubims and, and swords of fire that spun around that you couldn't even sliver into uh, the garden to get access to the tree of life. But on today, this is the day 
the portals of restoration are open. Yes, the portals of restoration are open. Access is granted to you today. It just takes one move on our part. Repentance. Change your mind. Just turn around. Just turn. You going this way, the wrong direction? Turn around. Make a U-turn. Go back and do your first works over and you shall eat of the tree of life.